Now, this is a topic inspired by Sophie this morning and a picture that she posted on her Instagram recently. It's a picture, actually, your mum sent you this. She sent yeah. you a picture of a picture, which she my mum does a lot of. But <laughs> how old were you here, Sophie? So, mum sent me this picture because she found it. I don't know where she found it, but she sent it to me maybe about a week ago. And I, in that picture, I'm about... I must have been about 17, about six months before the accident that I had that paralysed me. So I posted it because she sent it in, she sent it on my phone and I was at work and it kind of shook, shook me when I saw it. And it shook me for a couple of reasons. Firstly, because A, I was at work and I wasn't sort of expecting to see a picture of myself, but I was quite surprised by my reaction. A part of me was sort of looking at this image of my little self and thinking, right, if I could, would I go back and tell her in six months time, you're going to go to a collect your A-level results and you're going to go to a party and you're going to go after that party back to a sort of after party and in that journey you're going to lose control of your car and you're going to crash and you're going to be paralysed from the chest down and you're never going to walk again. You're never going to feel or move the rest of that, from that injury level down for the rest of your life. Or would I say nothing at all? And I, I really had this conundrum, it's a genuine one, where I thought actually would I save her from her fate, so to speak, because actually I love where I've got to in my life and she's going to be OK. I'm OK. I'm, in fact, I'm better than OK. I'm really thriving in my life. So I just I, I, I found the picture quite thought provoking mm. and I posted about it because I think everyone can relate to a certain extent. You know, that sense of seeing an image of yourself just before a trauma or just before a major milestone in your life, whether that's positive or negative. I feel you, or I think a lot of people can feel that sense of, would you go back? Would you, what would, would you, you say? Would you get back in that car? Well, this is the conclusion I've drawn, is that, yeah, I would. I would categorically not, I, 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 this is where I imagine myself sitting with myself and I, I don't think I would say don't do it because if I hadn't done it, if I hadn't got in that car and lost control of it and crashed, then I wouldn't have got paralysed. I wouldn't have ended up on the career and the life that I'm on. And I love this life. Don't get me wrong, it's hard. I mean, I'm, I'm a disability advocate for a reason. There's a lot to fight for. There's a lot of change that needs to happen. It's, it's, there's a lot wrong. And we don't almost need to go into that because I feel people can really empathise with how hard it is to have mm. a physical disability. But I do speak about the joy of having my disability because I mean it. I love my life. I mean, I'm sitting here doing stuff like this. And what would your mum say? <laughs> oh, bless her. To that answer that question, because I, I, the, the only reason I ask is that I have a 17 year old daughter and one of the biggest things that me and my husband discuss with her, we're, we're terrified about her getting in a car yeah. with an inexperienced yeah. driver because it's that age and in a way we all did it. Mm. Um, and, you know, and, and my husband is just saying to her all the time, don't get in that car, don't get in that car, get a, I will always pay for a taxi. Really? And it, but, but the pressure of, you know, yeah. because she's taking driving lessons, a lot of her friends now have just yeah. passed their test. So it is that real sort of danger. It's a, danger it's a dangerous time. So to answer your question, I think my mum would probably, to save her the agony and the pain and the, and the trauma, and she saved, my mum was a nurse. So when I had my injury, she stepped up to save my life in many ways and looked mm -hmm. after me and through the rehabilitation mm -hmm. and what she did. I think she'll never recover from. I mean, she still doesn't sleep past four in the morning, which is when the phone call came. And she carries that. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. think she would say, hell yeah, get in that photograph and tell that girl to not get in the car. Uh, for me, it's very different. I live with a different perspective. But yeah. so moving on to this point about driving, after my injury, I, I, I was driving, so I took full responsibility for what happened to me. But after And you were sober, I want I was to point sober. out, because you yeah. said you'd been to a party. I have been to a party, and yeah. I should say that. So the things that... The, the, I look back on what happened to me, and I thought, right, I need to understand what exactly happened there. Because I passed my test first time, I'd done all the right stuff. I, you know, I don't think I got any minors or majors or whatever it was that you know, I got through. So I look back and I thought, right, what actually happened? And the circumstances under which I crashed are pretty textbook, not to scare you, but mm. I say this because I think there's a learning to come from it. I was driving late at night. I was really excited. Everyone in the car was excited too. We were happy, we were celebrating life. Uh, there was uh, very unlit roads. I hadn't had my license very long. The music was blaring. Now, these are all circumstances that I think most young drivers will get into pretty early on. Mm. And the reality is, 
most people, will, young drivers will crash, but most people do walk away. The, the problem I find, and the reason why I campaigned for so long and feel very strongly about it now, uh, and would speak to your daughter and, and hammer home, this could happen to you, is that it, it very much not, you might not be one of the people that walks away, or you might hurt someone in your car and to live with the guilt and the responsibility. So what's your advice to a 17 year old, that the whole peer pressure of being in a car, you know, the boy that you fancy say is speeding, yeah. what would your advice be? So two things. One is, there are programmes out there, if you're learning to drive, don't learn to drive in a hurry. Never learn to drive in an intensive... You just give yourself a bit more time to learn. Um, there are programmes out there that will naturally maturate the processes of your brain to help you think like an older driver. So do your research, find out programmes that can, can help sort of simulate some of the dangerous circumstances, like the one I just talked about. Mm. You can now virtually learn to drive um, before you get in the car, so you can test your rea reactions and things like that. There's those options, but I would also say to the passengers of the girls, the passengers in the car, who I think about so often, young women getting into cars with young men who are showing off or, you know, really driving too fast or very inexperienced. If you want the car to slow down, just tell the driver that you feel sick. Because no one wants anyone being sick in there. No car. young boy wants anyone being <laughs> no. sick in his So rather than saying, saying like, slow down, slow down, slow down, I'm scared, I'm that scared. doesn't work. Because think about it, if you're a girl in the back of the car and you're going, you don't want to be the one that says slow down if mm -hmm. everyone's having fun. But you also don't want to be the one that says it and you get ignored. So, you know, you might not have the confidence to verbalise, please slow down, I'm scared. Mm. Just say, I feel sick. I think I'm going to be sick. So that's one way to, advice, to yeah. sort of, I suppose, protect yourself. But it is a scary time. It is a scary time. And I, I do understand how people could look at me and say, you know, you now live in a wheelchair and, and live with the consequences of your actions from when... I mean, none of us really left to live with the consequences of our actions from mm. when we were, what, 18? but I do, so I do recognise that it's, it's almost paradoxical to say, be careful, protect yourself from my fate, and at the same time say to myself, no, I like what happened to me, but I think, yeah, there's a lot to think about, and in terms of learning to drive later, I don't, I don't know if we should ra raise the age, mm -hmm. but I do think we need to help young drivers protect themselves from themselves. Yeah, absolutely right, Sophie, very, very well put, and at least for you to say that, that must give your mum a little bit of happiness mm. to know that you are happy, you know, yeah. out of all of this. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're, we're sending our love to your mum today. <laughs> yes. What a great job you've done. <laughs>